think there's some important goals to my part of the assessment that some questions I really want to answer. Um, first is um, other studies have looked at colleges like Harvard and Berkeley. You know, these schools have had um, personal environment fit investigated pretty substantially. They found only marginal differences. But I really believe that since we have a small college here, that we're going to see substantial differences in the way the social dynamics play out here. So I like to believe that we're going to find differences in person environment fit. Um, this may be due to certain things like class size, diversity, and social cohesion. Um, and also, I think, I think this will do a lot. It really helped to understand how the Honors College evolves over time. Um, like, you come here and you have certain values that you bring with you. Um, and over time, you're going to interact with the school. But also, in a way, you're remaking the Honors College throughout your four years here. Your values are going to be the upperclassmen's values. You're going to be one mentoring a future freshman class. How is that, how is that going to change Honors College? You know, is this place going to be different in four years from now? How is it going to be different? Now, my study's not going to last four years, but I think we can find, start to see a trend in the direction it's going to go by looking at uh, this study. Um, and that's my final slide. Um, and I, now I'm going to introduce Tara. So. Hi, everyone. My name is Tara. So, first off, there's this common idea that coming to a university over the course of four years, your maturity increases. But what exactly is maturity, specifically mental maturity? Um, we can see it in our relationships with people, in our everyday interactions, our moral reasoning. So, but it doesn't occur at the same time for everyone. So basically it's not something that's a function of age. We can see here that maturity is multifaceted, like I said, with our social interactions and moral reasoning. Basically, how we think and, and what we think about is affected by the level of our maturity. But how would we go about measuring maturity as a whole? I'd like to introduce um, the idea of ego development. The ego, just like maturity, is multifaceted. There are many different areas to it. Our level of impulse control, our tolerance of others and other groups of people, our perceptions of the world and our interpersonal relationships all combine together to form this idea of ego development. Basically, it's our perception of ourselves in relationship to the rest of the world around us. Um, so, the ego development level, just like maturity, affects the way we think. So someone operating at a conformist level of ego development is going to be very adherent to the golden rule and believe in unwavering loyalty to friends. But someone who's operating at more of an individualistic stage is going to recognize that people are complicated and so are situations, and therefore no one single belief is going to be sufficient to live your entire life by. They recognize that every situation has different aspects to it, and we have to examine each situation individually to come up with an answer as to how we should solve the problem. So ego development, if the differences are if do we see the world as simple or complex? Do we see or do we judge others based on stereotypes or do we recognize and cherish individual differences? And you know, at certain levels of ego development, you start to see that the world isn't just black or white and that there's many gray areas. The these changes specifically occur based on education. It's the number one correlated variable. Higher education levels go hand in hand with changes in ego development. We can see that someone who's taking more courses might be more aware of the different beliefs and ideas in the world, and this might broaden their understanding of others better and therefore change their ego development. Just like at liberal arts colleges, we get more of a, a broad education of every subject. And I think that specifically the Honors College, because of its small class sizes, will have a greater effect of these changes of ego development because we're more able to engage in class discussions 
about others' beliefs, specifically our classmates, and we can see what everyone else believes and, and learn to understand others and that there isn't just one single answer to everything in the world. And just like Dan had said, perhaps people you know, fit better into their situations and their environments based upon you know, their personalities. And with ego development, maybe people fit in better at the Honors College when they're operating at a certain level of ego development. So people who share common values may actually be operating at similar levels of ego development. So I think our results might show that there is a average ego development level that, at the Honors College that could be different than the national average. And I think that this study will be a great case for liberal arts colleges and especially the Honors College to show how greatly you know, these small colleges can help to enhance our ego development and further us along in life. And so just ending and what ways do you think people change at the Honors College? You know, maturity, if you are affected by the college itself or you know, like Kim is going to discuss next. Alright, um, hi, I'm Kim, and my study actually intends on taking a closer look at the Honors College students, the freshman class in particular. Dan was talking about this broad person-environment fit, which is kind of a broader idea, of analyzing the Honors College students, whereas Tara was talking about ego development, which is a little bit narrower, but my study intends on looking a little bit closer. Here is a kind of visual diagram of the Honors College students, kind of in shape form. <laughs> One second. Okay. The green squares represent acquaintances of yours. They're not particularly your best friends, and you don't really harbor any negative feelings against them. They're just other Honors College students to you. You are here, the yellow star. The blue dots represent your friends. You can tell that they're grouped together in different ways, but also looks like they're friends with other people that you might not be particularly close with. This person seems to be a little bit more than a friend. And the red squares represent other Honors College students that might not really be your favorite people. Now, my thesis really intends on looking at how did this happen? How do these various relationships form? What predicts them? And how can we analyze the quality of them? So I'd just like you to take a minute and think about your best friend that you had in high school, the person that you spent the most time with, and the person that you would, no matter what, rate at the top of your list anytime someone asked you about your relationships in high school. How did you become friends? And why are or aren't you two still close? Well, I'm giving that to you, if anyone wants to answer. Uh, we got into colleges and she joined the sorority. How did you become friends in the first place? Uh, we became friends um, in middle school through classes we had together and similar friends. And okay, anyone else? These all reflect kind of aspects of relationships that I intend to look at. Um, I'm looking at analyzing interpersonal relationships among first year students at the Honors College. Now, as you saw in my diagram before, interpersonal relationships describe any relationship you might have with somebody, like your friends, your best friends, any romantic partners, or even people you might not like particularly. I'm looking at main three aspects of predicting and analyzing these relationships. The first aspect is personality, which, you know, as everyone's been describing personality, but the main thing that I'm looking at is how similar you are in personality and whether or not that's a big predictor or a big factor in your relationships with other students. So for example, if two people are similar in extroversion, 
then maybe they, re they would be more likely to become friends and have a more successful relationship. And the second aspect are interests and activities. And this is kind of a factor that a lot of um, dating websites use, that you, know, you list your um, interests and activities and they kind of match you up with similar interests and activities of other people. So two people that might be interested in photography, for example, might be more likely to become friends. And finally, proximity. A lot of you mentioned proximity as a factor in your relationships. And this is really just how close you are and how much face-to-face -face interaction you might have with other people. So if you have a, a similar class schedule, you might be more likely to become friends with somebody. I also intend on looking at these over time. So a relationship at time one, how can we predict where it is at time two? This is a cartoon I found that is, um, I feel, a pretty good predictor of, or a good um, description of the Amish College, especially in the beginning. So this is really the awkward kind of stage. You, um, you come to college for the first time. You don't really know how to interact with people. But the biggest, I think the biggest and most important part of this is that college is really a time to start over for people. You can break free of any stereotypes, labels, any kind of groups that you had in high school, and you can essentially start over in college. So for this reason, I feel that analyzing relationships of freshmen are extremely important and also particularly interesting. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, how can you possibly collect all of this information on us and not be able to pick out who we are and have this remain confidential? Well, here's an Excel spreadsheet as an example of what we might see. So, as you can see, the, your names will be completely not associated with it, and most parts that we analyze will only involve correlations or different numerical values on how well you match up with other people rather than, you know, individual characteristics of each other. So we're, we're not going to be able to identify you, and we're not going to be able to pick you out from the group that participates. And this is our contact information. Again, the flyer that you might have seen around. You might see it now, especially. And you can contact us for any questions if you have any. Thank you.